What's up guys, welcome back. In this one we're going to look at a quick way to achieve a shiny leather effect. So we're going to start with a black base coat. Then we're going to do a rough wet blend. So what I do is I add a little bit of water to the black so that it's going to stay wet for longer. And then I paint that onto the surface, being pretty liberal with the amount of paint that I put on there so that it doesn't dry out. Next, you're going to grab some undiluted scale colour white sand and just blob it on to the wet black. And then you're just going to push it about a little. Take most of the white sands off your brush and start to work the paint around on the surface, letting it mix into the black. You can add some more white sands if you want, just sticking it onto the surface like this. When you're doing this, your goal is to try and create an interesting pattern. Don't try and get a perfect blend. All you want to do is mush the white uh, around a little on the surface. If you're not very good at wet blending, you're actually going to be uh, a bit of an advantage here because what you're essentially trying to do is actually a bad wet blend. So if you let that dry, you can continue by mixing some of the white sands into the black to get a grey and then thin it down with some water. Then you're essentially going to do the same thing, except this time your initial colour is grey instead of the black. So you just paint the grey onto areas where you want more of an interesting pattern. Then grab some of your white sands and splooge it onto the top and then just push it about a bit. Again, the key here is that you don't want to overwork it. If you do, what's going to happen is you're just going to end up with a flat grey and no patterning. Alright, so once you're happy with the look of the surface, you can add some more detail by taking a bit of your white sands and painting on more deliberate lines and dots to represent wear and tear on the leather. You can also paint over any little areas where you don't quite like the look of the surface, so you're essentially hiding those bits with a little well-placed line or two. I'll do the same on the side of the quiver, starting off with that grey colour. It doesn't really matter if you use black or grey to start off, just make sure that your first layer is thinned down a little. And then you're going to grab your white sand and splat it onto the top. And again, just push it around on the surface, being careful not to overwork it. So once that's done, I'll then add a little edge highlight along the side here with some of the white sands just to bring out the detail of that edge a little. And maybe I'll put in some more lines and dots as well. Alright, so I think that looks okay now. The next step is to take some red ink and we're going to mix a little bit of black ink into it to darken it down slightly. And then we'll mix a second colour with some red ink and some yellow ink to get us more of an orange. Now what we're going to do is take some of that dark red ink and we're going to paint it onto the bottom third of the quiver. And then we'll quickly grab some of the orange ink and place it into the middle of the quiver, wet blending that lower edge into the dark red. And then while the orange is still wet, we'll quickly grab some of that dark red ink and wet blend towards the top of the quiver this time. Try not to get any of the ink onto the rest of the model like I just did. Ink tends to dry pretty fast so if that happens you'll need to grab a clean brush and quickly draw the ink back off the surface before it dries. If it does dry you can always paint over it but it's, it's a bit of a hassle so it's usually better to fix it before that happens. Alright, so we'll do the same sort of thing on the side, just drawing the dark red over the surface. I won't bother to blend it with the, the orange here. You could if you wanted to, but I just thought the front should look a bit more interesting than the side. There was a bit of a bleed onto the other side of the quiver, so I'll use a clean brush to draw that edge away so that it doesn't dry with a horrible line along the front there. I'm saying the front, but it's really the back, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> So the coverage is a bit ropey towards the top and bottom edges, so I'm going to fix that by placing a bit of the dark red at the bottom here. And then using a second clean brush, I'll draw the edge up away from the bottom so that it doesn't dry with a hard edge. And we'll do the same sort of thing on the top, first placing the ink and then drawing the edge away with a second brush. Just to finish up, we can take some of our white sand and pick out a few little details here and there. So once that's done, I'll then add a little edge highlight along the side here. So I prefer to do a broken line rather than a solid one. Once I saw Ben Comets using that idea, I was pretty much hooked. I'm forever doing broken lines now. I really like the way it looks. It's, it's actually a little easier than getting a solid edge too, so it's kind of a win-win. So yeah, that's the final result. 
If you want to reduce the shine, you can apply a bit of satin or matte varnish over the top to reduce it down to whatever level that you want. If you'd like to support the channel, gain exclusive access to longer ad-free video content, as well as automatic membership to our active Discord community, become a patron today for as little as $1 a month.